Hey everyone, this is Mongolia Economics by Hannah Mangelson, Paige Merez, Ali McIntyre, Rex Nielsen, and Spencer Nelson. This graph shows the real gross domestic product, or real GDP, percent growth rate of Mongolia in 2012, as well as the GDP growth rate of its two surrounding countries, which are China and Russia, as well as the U.S. for comparison. Mongolia is ranked the fifth highest GDP percent in the world, and although it has decreased from the previous year, it's still very high at 12.7%, which is most likely due to its large exports in oil. This graph shows the GDP per capita in 2012 for Mongolia. At $5,400, it's still less than its surrounding countries and much less than the U.S., but again, it's steadily increasing based on the country's GDP growth. This graph shows the GDP purchasing power parity, or the value of all the goods in the country. Mongolia's GDP is increasing, but is still significantly less than surrounding areas in the U.S. As exports and GDP increase, though, this number is expected to rise. The Gini coefficient of Mongolia as of 2008 is up to 36.52. That is compared to January 04 to 06 is 33.03 percent. The Gini coefficient, from what I can understand, is the measure of income inequality amongst a given society. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of the factors that are contributing to this income inequality, the rise in income inequality in Mongolia. One factor is the movement of people from agriculture-based areas to the more industrial cities more industry and services. Uh, the skill premiums are also rising in Mongolia. What the skill premium is is basically the difference in wage of skilled labor and that of unskilled labor. Um, this has been impacted by emigration, especially in Mongolia. Uh, people are moving out of the country these people with skilled labor essentially are moving out of the country, increasing the demand. So demand for skilled labor within the country is not me being met by increasing supply, which overall contributes to income inequality amongst the people. Um, this is of 2008. The charts down here, figure 5 and 6, as you can see, are up until 2007. Uh, the wage premium due to secondary education, like I was talking about, skilled labor, has rise immensely, especially in the years 2002 to 2007, as you can see. These are the countries of East Asia. Um, but, like I said, I tried to find something a little bit more recent, but this is about the best I could do. So this is the Gini coefficient of Mongolia as of 2008. The Human Development Index is very basically it's a report on how well a country is developing. It has three indicators, the first being health, uh, focused on the life expectancy of the people. The second being education, which is, the, which is focused on the average number of years that adults spent in school, and the expected number of years that the people are spending in school. The third uh, indicator is the standard of living which is focused on the income of the, which is the general income. In Mongolia, the life expectancy is about 68 and a half years. The number of years that adults have spent in school is about 8.3, while the expected number of years in school is 14.1. The gross national, gross national income per capita is $3,198, and overall Mongolia has a ranking of 110 out of the 187 countries included in the report. Okay, this graph represents the Human Development Index and how it's changed over time. Uh, looking at just the green line, which represents Mongolia, you can see that the HDI of Mongolia went down slightly and then went up very, very quickly. It's gone up uh, at the most within the last 10 years. It's still a bit lower than the yellow line, which represents the average of the rest of the world, but it's gotten a lot closer than it was 20 years ago when uh, Mongolia was first included in the Human Development Report. 
This slide shows the inflation percentage rate in Mongolia and various countries and continents around the world for comparison. This graph shows the inflation in a range of two years starting in 2001 and ending in 2011. Inflation is an increase in prices and a fall in the value of your dollar. We see that the inflation rate has stayed pretty consistent. Inflation rates will spike and go back down to typically stay at a pretty average rate. We see one of these spikes in 2005, but it goes back down to the trend of the very small rise in inflation. We also see that the inflation rate is very high compared to the rest of the world. What this does to the Mongolian people is similar to what we Americans do when we see that the gas prices went up 10 cents from the previous day. One may ask, why is the inflation gradually climbing? Well, the biggest reason is that Mongolian, the Mongolian government is spending more than they are taking in, similar to the United States today. Um, but as we see, um, Mongolia's inflation is much higher than the United States. Okay, what we're seeing here is the labor force participation rate. And as you can see from the graph from the 1990s all the way up to the 2012 last year, these are values of the ratio of females and males in the percentage wise of their participation. And you can see in 1990 it is actually quite low from the ratio of female to male. Females were not in the workforce quite as much. And then moving all the way up to uh, 2002, 2003, you have a little peak there goes down a little bit, comes back up, and then in 2007, recession hit, and women, well, not recession, recession for the United States, but not for Mongolia, women were not working in the field, and so that ratio dropped again. And then, advancing to the next slide here, what we see is if we take a look at the graph, we'll see Mongolia plays out by employment, men and women. <clears throat> Mongolia does not have a high percentage of men and women employed by the standards that we use here in the United States as far as working. And so what you do is you see this graph and the first two numbers here, first and second, represent women and men. So as compared with the United States and different parts of China, you can see that Mongolia is actually quite low. And then you move over to the last few areas here, and it's the participation rate as far as children helping in the family, and that's actually significantly higher in Mongolia than it is for the United States and China. This is because families in Mongolia have to help support each other, and so children are, are being used to incorporate and, and change that. Okay, and then what we see here is uh, unemployment rate is actually quite high. What happens is that families have older parents, grandparents, and children <clears throat> that stay home and, and are not employed. And the family has to compensate for that. And then these values, these men and women who still are of, age, of the age to continue working are not, so they're considered unemployed. Um, this is being changed throughout and through the increase of mining operations though. So you can see that the change is actually better. They've, they've had some, some good things happening. Their unemployment rate is actually decreasing. And what also is happening is this takes them to a 23% uh, increase in their industrial production growth. By this growth, they have more jobs. They have more things that people are able to do. And uh, over 80% of their exports are then going to the ever needful China and who's also over 40 percent of their imports and so there's some good things unemployment is not as high as it was a year ago but it is still quite high um, okay so what we also have here is the government is responsible for an astounding 44.4 percent of taxes and other revenues uh, places them in the 50th in the world um, they have a deficit of minus 5.2 percent so they're spending more than they're making always always bad and this makes it hard for them to keep up um, but what's happening is their increase of production is so much more that they're actually have inflation so it, it, it's increasing and expected to still rise from 9.5 percent last year to a 12.9 percent this year so really you have positions of negative and positive from exports and goods 
So positive, you're earning and more able to supply the nation with more jobs. However, what happens is globalization in a negative way. Um, also, uh, people are are not quite as happy. They're they're having to to go and work in in the industry of mining and different things instead of staying at home and and being more traditional. And this comes with globalization. There are good things and bad things. And so it's it's hard for their uh, for them to support their families and women and children have to leave the home to support help support the families. It's hard to have the family away from the home and and such things deal with how life is for them and what's necessary to survive. You know, it doesn't make them quite so happy, but it's necessary. This is a, a part of a growing and changing nation. According to the Index of Economic Freedom, Mongolia ranks 75th freest economy in the world. At an average of 61.7, it ranks above the world average of 59.6, as well as the regional average of 57.4, but is still below the free economy's average of 84.5. In Mongolia, property rights are recognized but are not enforced by the government, and heavy taxes create a burden, which accounts for the country's declining freedoms in government. Regardless, starting a business is relatively easy, which is why the country's regulatory efficiency is rising, but inflation is a major threat. Foreign investment is welcome, but restricting tariffs threaten their market and trading freedoms. We see here that the trade per capita for Mongolia is huge compared to the countries surrounding it, and the United States. In this next slide, we will see why. The reason being is that Mongolia's tariffs are extremely low. Also, the main export of Mongolia is their coal, which is the largest coal reserve in the world. Mongolia has so much potential um, it can cash in on. Um, some of the things that they have already cashed in on is that their labor force participation rate is improving as far as males and females both working. Um, this brings in more of an income for families, if, especially if both the mom and the dad are working. Um, their trade to GDP is really extremely high um, compared to its neighboring countries and also the U.S. because, probably because, Mongolia has the largest coal reserve in the world still to this day. Um, some of the things that Mongolia needs to improve on in order to become a really um, good um, country as far as comparing them to the United States and to places in England um, and Europe would be that um, they need the government needs to stop spending as far as um, receiving um, less than their spending. Um, something that is kind of a domino effect because of that is that it's taking them into a inflation, which is always a bad thing as far as wealth of the country goes because the value of their dollar goes down. But... There is definitely hope for this country as far as turning it around. They just need to, I guess, get their act together as far as their spending habits, as far as the government goes, because there are plenty of people that are working in that country 